All right, Paul, Gary Patterson's out 21 years. Mm -hmm. He was really good for TCU, but we, we could see the slippage and even meltdowns. Uh, Brian Eskridge will join his voice of TCU here in about 15 minutes. Yeah, and look, it, it with T Gary Patterson was transformational at TCU. He made them a relevant football program, which they had not been. He's the greatest coach in their history. And, you know, there, there's like a large gap between the 40s and 50s when TCU had, you know, guys like Doak Walker, which actually might have been in the 30s. I don't know. But, but Davey O'Brien. Davey O'Brien. I'm yeah. sorry. Davey O'Brien. Doak Walker's SMU. Please don't kill me. Um, SMU fans, but uh, all three of them are just. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but no offense, yeah. but uh, but there are things that no coach, no matter how many statues they have of them, can avoid. One of them is uh, mediocrity when you're paying a guy a lot of money not to be mediocre, and the team's mediocre. Uh, you that's going to finally you know pop the bubble of protection that Gary Patterson had around in Fort Worth. One is that if you already have bad attendance and it's getting worse, that's not going to help. And three is if you treat people like garbage or you automatically jump at everybody's ass every time somebody even writes something some way cross about you and your arguments for doing so are often nonsensical, there's a time where the people around you are going to say, we're tired of this crap. And that's what happened with Gary Patterson. When you start to lose, you lose the buffer. Uh, you, you lose some of the mulligans. Uh, and Grant Tapp, the Hall of Fame coach, everyone knows, former Baylor coach. I spoke with him earlier today, and he had a great relationship with Gary Patterson. And he talks about Patterson, the coach, but also the decision by TCU. And in coaching searches in general, Dave Aranda admired Gary Patterson because of the deep, you can imagine, those defensive minds, you know, and uh, his comments about him. And then I ask about Gary Patterson as well. And it happens to be the week that Baylor's playing TCU, and there was a part of me, just a small part of me, because Gary Patterson's had some big moments and some also bad moments against Baylor. That's been the great rivalry. Um, that he didn't want to continue. He was given that opportunity. Brian Estridge will clear all that up for us because he didn't want to lose a weekend to Baylor. I mean, it's part of me is like, I, I know that's not what went into the decision, but to just not fathom losing this week. If, in fact, they do, TCU might rise up under Jerry Kill. Uh, yeah, they might. Uh, that'd be a really disappointing thing for Baylor. Uh, they have no business losing to TCU this weekend. None. They have no business losing to TCU in Fort Worth uh, with the way the two teams are playing. Uh, you're right. I mean, maybe TCU rallies. Uh, I thought, you know, Texas Tech might do the same, uh, and that was not the case against Oklahoma. Then again, they were playing Oklahoma. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Gary Patterson, I think it was very obvious he had a, a massive dislike for Baylor. And, you know, a large part of it a few years ago was Art Bryles and, and the rivalry that those two had. Um, but that doesn't explain why he spent years uh, randomly blocking various media members and fans of the fan base and you know come to find out that other fan bases i saw here recently were like hey wait a second why am i randomly blocked by gary you know it's just weird stuff like that that it's just not i i don't know just that, that that part of him that that got so bothered by people although he acted like it didn't bother him but it clearly did and just like you said some of the, the tantrums and some of the rants and and things like that he just you know, it ne never sat well with me. I never had a problem with the guy until I looked up one day and I was just blocked. And I was like, okay, well, that's fine, too. And then, you know, just some of the things he said along the way. So, you know, tremendous football coach. Tremendous football coach. Anybody in football is going to, you know, pay their respects today to Gary Patterson. I think he had a big personality issue, though. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, they got worse and worse and worse to the point where, yes, even your own fans – who very rarely do fans, if you're winning the way that he was winning, do they really point out your flaws, especially in your personal? Well, that's just the way, you know, that's our coach. That's how he is. He's winning, so it doesn't matter. But you as soon no, as you, you like it when he's spicy, exactly. when he's your coach. Yeah. As soon as he starts losing, though, you start to realize, like, wow, that's actually not that cool and tough. It's actually very amateur hour and, and very immature, the, a lot of the things that he's saying at times. And so I think that, you know, TCU fans probably realize that as, as things continue to struggle along. And I saw a number of them who were, you know, on board with the move being made sooner rather than later. It wouldn't surprise me if he did look at the calendar and saw Baylor coming up and the decision of like, hey, we want you to stay on in some capacity. And it wouldn't surprise me if that played a little factor into it. It's just the timing so funny. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, an unbelievable, 
you know, story coming out of this weekend. Uh, we talked about the possibilities of this starting to bubble up, obviously, but did not expect it to happen, you know, just a few days later. So that's a massive job opening, at least in this state. Uh, nationally, I'm not sure how coveted it will be, but I'm sure there will be a lot of people interested. And, of course, with tech open and, you know, the possibility of what dominoes or, or pieces are shifted around due to that job. And, you know, okay, if Dykes goes to tech, well, there's SMU, you know, uh, all these different things. It's going to be a very interesting coaching carousel here in the state of Texas. Or Sonny Dykes ends up going across town uh, yeah, to, to uh, TCU that may have started part of this downfall. I want to read some of the text messages or chat room as well. 254-339-1122. But Gary Patterson out, Brian Estridge will talk about that. Sam Connor, the athletic.com, wrote a big feature on Gary Patterson and how all this happened. Where did the fall begin? Uh, that's at 345. My one-on-one today with Dave 